Right, so we're in Blender and we want to uh, render a tilt brush piece with some ray tracing. It's, it's, it's a pretty simple process really, so what we'll do is just in the main tab here, push A, get rid, select everything, get rid of it, push the delete key, go up to your imports, import uh, GLTF, browse to your tilt brush folder, exports, and then grab your Tilt brush GLB. I'm going to bring in my Wild West one for this example. It's 196 megabyte uh, GLB, but we'll import that now. And we'll just wait for it to load. There's a couple of things you got to do to set up, but it's this is so simple, there's not a lot to it. So um, I'll just go to a side view here. That'll do me. I'll just position this right in the middle of the scene. First thing I want to do is probably just scroll down the scene collection here and just select the scene lights and get rid of those two because we don't need those they just uh, the GLB seems to export those uh, with it out of um, with the model FBX doesn't okay so we've done that right now we want to just we'll probably stay on that side view and we'll go object uh, no sorry while we're in object mode we'll go add a light and we'll go to a sun so it just it doesn't really matter where it is and then go to your rotation tool at the left and you just want to, whatever way, you, this is, you can just play with this, this is just so you can adjust it to wherever you want your light coming from. I'll just have the house at, maybe I'll just flip around this direction and give it a little bit of a change of direction this way as well, so it's got a bit more of a slant coming in. Okay, that's us done there. I'll flick over to the shaded tab, so this is what our model looks like with the, um, in the shaded. It's not rendered yet, but that's alright, that doesn't take long to do. Now I'll just scroll down here. Looks like there's a couple of textures here that are a little bit weird. So what we'll do is we'll flick over to the shading tab at the top there. In the shading tab, um, just you have to use uh, press shift to drag the thing around with the middle mouse button, the model I mean, or using the middle mouse you can pan up and down. It's, it's not the best way to move around compared to Unity, but you'll get used to it. Okay, and then click on whatever's and say this is all the data for that. Um, that layer what I normally do to fix it is you just drag the line from your vertex color straight across to your principal BSDF like that and then you'll see it's just beard it looks like the Kiwi's beards the same so we'll just drag that there let's fix that now just have a little look around have we got everything everything looks like pretty good enough for the render anyway and we may just select the water and we've got metallic uh, speculars there. We'll probably change the roughness on the water, which is uh, diamond, uh, shiny hull, I think. Shiny hull, I think it is. So we'll change that to maybe 0.1. So that's got some reflectivity, because if it's at 1 on the roughness, it won't have too much reflections. And then we want to go across to the right and set up now for our render. So we go to the little tab with the little, looks like a red globe with a little circle around it. So we click on that, which we're already on. And then under the here you can choose, if you click on the little yellow dot where it says color on the right hand side here, you can go down and choose an environment texture which just wraps any photo or whatever you've got around the outside, which then it uses that as well and bake, it sort of uh, renders that and uses that to reflect off the surfaces in the thing, or you can just use a color. So I'm just going to use a color since this is quite a cartoony one. So I'll just click here and uh, I'll just drag, oh, that'll, that'll be close enough blue for me. And we're pretty much really just about set up to render now. So what we do then is just go up on this little row of uh, menus here. We just go up to the these icons, go to the camera. It looks like the back of a DS DSLR camera. Click on that. Over to the right there, you'll see it says Render Engine. Change that to Cycles. Um, for your device, I generally use GPU. Depends how fast your CPU or your GPU is. GPUs are generally faster, so click on that. And then there's only one other setting. Go down and you'll see it says Denoising. Click on that. And then you just want to do the checkbox for Viewport where it says Automatic. And that's pretty much it. And now, probably the easiest way to do this is probably go back to your layout menu because you've got the biggest window there. And then just position your camera whereabouts you think it'll be a good good spot to take a 
or, or just wherever you want to get your first look at it, it doesn't really matter because you can just keep shifting around once it's even when it's rendering or it is a little bit slower so it's just generally easier in Blender just to move yourself where you want to take your um, or where you want to see what it looks like for a start. So we'll just have a look at this corner here. So now we're there and then you just simply go up to the top there and click the other icon which is the viewport shading, the furthest most right one, click that and then it'll start rendering. And what you'll probably find is we may need to go into our scene collection here. I probably should have done this first, but you never know until you do it first time, depending on what you're rendering. Click on the sun, and then down on this little row of icons here, you click on the little light bulb screen. This is your sun. You can change its color. There's all sorts of stuff. You can play around with to uh, jazz up your scene or whatever. I usually just, for my ones, I'll whack this up since it's cartoon. I'll, I'll whack the sun up to about 10. Try that. Oh, yep, yeah, that's brightened it up a bit. But yeah, look at the uh, as it's rendering now. Hopefully, this comes through right on the video. You'll see how much extra that this ray tracing is adding to the scene. So, you can get some pretty spectacular screenshots. And the other thing, I'll just switch out of uh, the ray trace view for a second back to the shaded. And we'll go to the shading tab. And we'll just position ourselves again, maybe over by this pond this time. Yeah, this will do. Okay, so we've done that. So now what we'll do is we'll go back into Ray Traced. We'll just click that little circle again, and then it's coming up. Now I'm just going to select the 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 diamond hull for the water and then we can just play around with this and watch it change on the fly so we changed I'll change the roughness back up to one which was set on just so you can see the uh, effect of it so it's it's a pretty flat color now now if I take that right off she'll be almost mirror like yeah you can see it's already rendering in that that perfect rendered mirrored finish so It'd have to be a pretty still day for it to be that reflective, like if you're going for more of a realistic look, if you're going to take some good photos. So I might just go back to the roughness and put it up to 0 0.05, just so it's got a slight, just a slight blurring, like it's got a little bit of water to it. Like you can really play around with it, I'll go even get, I'll go try 0.4 and see what it comes out like. It should be actually quite quite blurred. See, that's it's really only just marginally got a little bit of it's virtually no reflection. There's some very close to the edges. Um, and we could go 0.2. We could try half that. Yep, and see, you'll just get a quite a blurred thing, which can be effective too, depending on what you're after, really. But um, it's really just to show you, this video is just to show you how simple and easy it is to bring in. A tilt brush piece and render it for some great screenshots and I'll just take this back to point one and if I just try to zoom out here you'll see it's quite sort of it's quite jerky slow frame rate when um, it's trying to render at the same time so it's quite often easier just to tab out of the at the top just click the circle to the left of the uh, ray trace one drag your scene where you want to see it um, we'll just we'll crowd around here. We'll go and have a look at the uh, the horses in the middle there. So other than that, you saw there's pretty much not not really too much editing to do to get it to start capturing some great screenshots. Now I'll just click on uh, ray trace again, and there we go. It's rendering in again, and I'll just click out of the off the scene. Actually, we'll. I'll maximize this view so we can get the best view here. Here we go. And you can as you can see that the lighting is just fantastic with the with the ray trace rendering because you get the proper light bouncing and all that ambient light. In the darker places in there like you could go and add um some point lights in the in the saloon if you wanted you know in your scene if you've got a buildings or whatever and then that, that'll all be rendered when it does its ray tracing so yeah there's not much to it really
but I can I'll run it through the steps one more time just so if anyone wants to do it I can go through them I'll just do it step by step so I'll just tab out of the uh, full screen view sometimes it's easy it's definitely easy to get out of the uh, rendered mode when you're trying to move because it's it's just doing so much at one time so we'll go back to layout so basically you bring your model in as if you've just imported it you add your sun which we've already got now because we've already done this one you add your sun you can even rotate it around for different screenshots at different angles we'll do that once you've done your sun and it's just straight over to the shading tab, fix any um, layers that may not be rendered, which is just basically dragging your vertex, align from your vertex one to your base color on the principled BSDF. And then to the materials tab, oh, the world properties one, sorry, over the right there. And then you can add your, either your background image or your color. Once you've done that, then it's just straight to the, uh, the render properties changing it from EVs to cycles and then to GPU compute and then down to the denoising one it just makes it so it renders a little bit faster in your view really and then click on viewport and then yeah back to your scene rotate your camera to where you want and hit that magic button and voila you'll be getting spectacular screenshots in no time good luck